Hi, this is Pastor Kimball, and we're here uh, for a closer walk. Today is Unit 1, Day 5, on page 24 of your workbooks, uh, and we're going to complete uh, the exercise that we started yesterday, uh, where we were talking about God's work through you. We're going to be looking once again in the back of your of your books to the, uh, the diagram uh, showing experiencing God uh, and the seven steps um, that you will experience or the seven realities that you will experience as we move through our experiencing God material. First of all, in, by way of review, number one, God is always at work around you. Number two, God pursues you with a love relationship that is real and personal. Number three, God invites you to become involved with him in his work. And then uh, we're going to begin today uh, with the fourth reality. And that is that the reality that God showed in the life of Moses, number four, God spoke uh, to reveal himself and his purposes and his ways to Moses. In Exodus chapter 3, we have the account of the burning bush uh, where the angel of the Lord appeared to him uh, in a flame of fire from a, within the bush. And God called to him from within the bush, says, Moses, Moses. And Moses said, Here I am. Do you not come any closer? Do not come any closer, he said. Take off your sandals, for the place where you are standing is holy ground. And then he said, I am the Lord God of your fathers, and the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. The Lord said, I have indeed seen the misery of my people, uh, in Egypt, and I have heard that cry out from the slave drivers, and I am concerned about their suffering. So I have come down to rescue them from the hand of the Egyptians and to bring them out of their captivity into a land that is good and spacious. God was doing something with Israel, and as he spoke to Moses, his speaking to him became an invitation for him to join God in what he was doing. Which takes us to reality five. God's invitation to Moses is to work with him. And as he began to work with him, Moses experienced a crisis of belief that required faith and action. In, in Exodus chapter three, verses 11 and 13, Moses, after hearing what God was doing, and after knowing that God was speaking and inviting him to join him, Moses' response was, Who am I that I can go to Pharaoh to bring the Israelites out of Egypt? Suppose I go to the Israelites and they say to them, they, and, and say to them God of your fathers has sent me, and they ask me, What is his name? <laughs> then what shall I tell them? What if they do not believe me or don't listen to me? The Lord did not say that the Lord did not appear to me. God, I am not eloquent and I can't speak. So I have a slow of tongue and slow of speech. You see, Moses was at a crisis of belief. And it required that he respond to God in faith and action. Then reality number six sets in. When Moses was required to make a major adjustment in his life in order to join God in what he was doing. Moses' crisis required this faith and action. In, in Hebrews chapter 11, it gives us an account of Moses' life. It says, by faith, Moses, when he was grown up, refused to be known as the son of Pharaoh's daughters. He chose to be mistreated among the people of God rather than enjoy the pleasures of the sin for a short time. By faith he left Egypt, not fearing the king's anger who preserved him because he saw him. he was the one who is invisible. By faith he kept the Passover and the sprinkling of blood so that the destroyer of the firstborn would not touch the firstborn of Israel. Of Israel. By faith the people passed through the Red Sea as on dry land, but when the Egyptian tried to do so, they were doomed. You see, faith and action follows our crisis of belief. And then reality seven, Moses came to know God by experiencing him through obedience and accompanying him in the work that he had for Moses to do. 
throughout the book of Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy, uh, we see the, God, the illustration of how God used Moses and the experiences in Moses' life to impact a, a people and a whole nation uh, for all of eternity. And that's what God desires to do with you. And then the Lord said to Moses, Why are you crying out to me? Tell the Israelites to move on. Raise your staff and stretch out your hand over the sea to divide the water so that the Israelites can go through the sea on dry ground. I have hardened the hearts of Pharaoh so that they will go in after them, and I will gain glory through Pharaoh and all of his army. See, God took them to the place of a deliverance as an experience as a result of Moses' obedience uh, and following God and leaving where he was in order that he might experience God in a real and in a mighty way. On page number 26, I want to invite you to answer the questions about these last four realities and how they might, uh, and how what you have gained from them, reality for what did God reveal about himself, his purpose, and his ways um, when he was dealing with Moses. Reality five, what did Moses have trouble believing about God? And then reality number six, what was the adjustment that was required by Moses. And reality number seven, how do you think Moses felt when God deliver, delivered the Israelites through him? And I know you're thinking, well, that's Moses. That's not me. Uh, I'm not Moses, and there were no others. That was just one Moses. But I want to encourage you to let you know that that's, the Bible is simply a pattern about how God works. And in James chapter 5, verses 17 and 18, he gives us a, a, a real live indication of what he's really all about. James chapter 5, verse 17 and 18 says, Elijah was a man just like us. Hmm. He prayed earnestly that it would not rain, and it did not rain on the land for three and a half years. And he prayed, and the heavens gave rain, and the earth produced crops. Elijah was a man, an ordinary man, just like you and me. And he prayed and God responded powerfully. And even in the New Testament there's another account that I really like that shows how God works through ordinary people. And when Peter and, and James and John were called before the Sanhedrin after they had healed the man that was lame from birth, the Bible said that those religious uh, men of authority looked upon Peter and John, and here's the words they said when they saw them. And when they saw the courage of Peter and John and realized that they were unschooled, ordinary men, they were astonished, and they took note that these men had been with Jesus. As much as we revere Peter and John and the other disciples, the Bible is very clear. These were ordinary people. They were fishermen. They were people that had no formal education. They had no status in the world, and they had not done great things before they met Jesus. But the account is that they had been with Jesus. You see, Jesus can take an ordinary man, and when an ordinary man yields himself to a God like him, he can do extraordinary things. God only requires a yielded soul that's willing to hear him and respond to him. And he is the one that will do great things. Well, today, as we close out our first week, I would like to first of all go over our memory verse for this week. And then next week we'll have a different one. But this week I want you to submit to your memory verse, uh, John 15, 5, in the NIV version, I am the vine, you are the branches. If the man remains in me and I in him, he will bear much fruit. And without me and apart from me, he can do nothing. We look forward to seeing you next week uh, as we journey a little closer walk with him while we experience in God. Be blessed.